Dear friends, it is Monday, July 17, 2023. We're in our third week at VPC in studying the book of Jonah. Our series is called Jonah in July. There's a little booklets that are available if you want to drop by the church and grab one. And uh, I hope you've got some coffee or tea. I have some tea in my Awaken Cafe uh, mug, our little wonderful cafe experience that if you are visiting this area or you live in this area, we'd love you to come and experience the Awaken Cafe as well. We know some people who watch this are at a much greater distance and that may not be possible. So get the coffee and tea from wherever you can as we jump into scripture today. And we're gonna be looking at some verses from the very end of chapter one, one verse, and then uh, the first couple of verses of Jonah chapter two. So open your Bibles there and here we go. Jonah's tossed overboard, you may remember, by a set of merciful mariners that he's been traveling with. They are pagans. But they pray, they seek God's counsel, they are uh, reluctant to toss Jonah overboard even though he's, he's uh, by withholding information that he's under God's judgment, he's put them all in peril and he's ruined their trip. They've had to throw their cargo off to survive in the storm and nevertheless they treat him beautifully. Uh, they try to get to know him, they, uh, they invite him into their prayers, they try to protect him even when it's clear that uh, the judgment is for him. and. Uh, Finally, reluctantly, they toss him overboard as he requests. He wants death by mariner. And then the Lord provides a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish. And Jonah prayed and said, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. It's a word for the underworld. I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, one of the signs, the great signs of religious authenticity is uh, the capacity to repent. In fact, at one level, the religious life is is a maturity in repentance. It is a continual repentance in which as we become more like Christ, we become more aware of thing, things in our life that are not Christ-like, which we confess, move toward changing, and uh, this allows us to develop in love and in goodness and in grace. Now, um, but repentance is, is, is kind of the inevitable accompanying uh, part of, self under, of our growing self-understanding. Jonah uh, does not repent. The first thing you, you do when you're repenting is you take responsibility for the things that you've done wrong. Jonah does not. He never asks for forgiveness for rebelling against God and, re and trying to flee God's presence and resisting his calling. Um, in fact, he blames God for his predicament. You cast me into the deep into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me, all your waves and billows and your billows passed over me. This is accusatory language. But actually, it's a just judgment and it's Jonah who decided to go overboard. He, he what God didn't cast him overboard, the, the mariners did at, at Jonah's request. So this is this upside down uh, logic that comes when we are uh, resi resisting God. We could protest clearly when we pray to God. It is very clear in the Psalms and in the examples of prayers in the Bible that it's okay to be upset with the tragic and difficult things in our lives. But there's a difference between blaming God and protesting. And clearly Jonah goes over the line. Um, this chapter two that we're looking at this week is a wonderful test of how accurately and how uh, clearly we can read scripture. Sometimes we are lulled into um, being less attentive to, to what's actually going on in scripture because of our uh, the form of it, because um, scripture can fool us a little. There can be a subtlety to the Bible. And this is particularly evident in what, <coughs> excuse me, in what is called counter narratives. These are narratives where the story is going along as we expect a story to go and suddenly there are twists, the villains become heroes, the heroes become villains, and unless we're paying attention to it, we can miss the cues a little bit. 
And so some people read the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells and they don't realize it's a counter narrative. Like when people heard that the Samaritan was, that the priest and the, and the, and the, and the uh, Levite, these temple uh, leaders got, got it wrong and didn't help the man and, and the Samaritan got it right, they were in shock because they expected the temple guys to be the heroes and the Samaritan to be the goat in this story. And so sometimes you have to be discerning when you're listening to a biblical story about what's actually going on. And it sounds like Jonah's prayer, which he's praying in the, in the belly of this whale in the story, is, um, is a great, you know, holy, beautiful prayer. But there's a, there are notes of a lack of authenticity to it. And the first one I've mentioned is that he is blaming God for his predicament when it's really his own fault. He's not owning his own uh, part in this disaster. Um, and he does describe in a beautiful poetic way, a lot like Psalm um, 18, if you want to, if you want to compare this, um, he is, is uh, talking about the terrors of the breakers, which uh, engulfed him. He's talking about the uh, seaweed that enwrapped him. It's, it's, it's really echoing Psalm 18 and it's beautiful, poetic uh, language. We can pray an insincere prayer that sounds beautiful. <laughs> but sincerity is to do with the heart that we are using, uh, uh, that we're, it, whether our heart is in line with the words that we're expressing. And so uh, a beautiful prayer can also be a hypocritical prayer. And that's one of the questions we're gonna ask about the authenticity of this prayer as our week goes on. Let's take a moment and pray, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want our deeds and our words to match our hearts. We don't want to be hypocritical. And um, we know also that when, when things are difficult, we should not blame you. Your judgments are good and altogether righteous. Your ways are just and true. And we need to depend on your mercy and grace if we want to live joyfully and honestly. Help us to learn what it means to do continual repentance. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.